So it is my October reading roundup video and we are going to talk about all the great books that I read this month. I read some really good ones. I don't think I read one bad book this entire month. So I got some really great ones for you to put on your list. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Mandy, the Handmade Homeschooler, and I am a mom who loves books. And that's probably 90% of the reason why I started my channel. So while most of my content is homeschool related, I am a book reviewer and it's just most of the time I'm reviewing homeschool books or kid books, but I'm starting to branch out into books for adults and moms. So that's what you're seeing more of on my channel and it seems like I'm getting a really great response for it because it is getting harder and harder to find good Christian books for adults. So I am here to help remedy that and give you some great suggestions because I am always reading at least one to three books at a time. So as usual, I will leave the links to everything you're going to see here down below in the description box. Now I'm not going to have books to actually physically show you for each one that I read because I am a Kindle user to save money. I am a Kindle Unlimited subscriber. Now, if you don't know what Kindle Unlimited is, Kindle Unlimited is a program that you can buy if you have the Kindle, it's not required. Um, you can just buy your books one at a time, which is what I've done for years. But this year I decided to subscribe to the, I think it's $11 a month subscription plan and a bunch of books are on there totally free with that plan. So. It actually made a lot of sense for me and because my son got a Kindle for Christmas last year, we buy a lot of books. <laughs> so even with the Kindle prices, which are cheaper, it's actually saving us a lot of money per month. If I just get a Kindle Unlimited subscription, I'll try to find a link for that down below if you want to check into that too. So a lot of my books will be here on my Kindle, so I'm not going to have a physical book to show you, but I do have three physical books here. Now I also have a blog post on everything that I read this month as well. So you can go and read my blog and the links of course will be on there so that you can read. And I post a lot of this stuff on my Instagram. So let's jump into the reviews. So the first book I read this month is called Point of Danger from Irene Hannon. That was a Kindle book this, this month. And that was, I read that like in the first couple of days of the month. That was kind of a three out of five stars for me. It was a Christian suspense book. I really liked that the main character was really staunchly pro-life. She was very Republican and it's really hard to find, even in the Christian genre, characters that are written that way. It always seems like the characters are either completely neutral and won't speak about those kind of topics or they will be totally on the other side. And it's very uh, unbalanced, I think, in that realm. So she's a talk show radio host and there is a person out there or persons trying to attack her for her beliefs and she gets together with a detective to try to solve the mystery. I would say three out of five stars. I loved the main character and her sisters, but as far as the storyline, it kept me really interested. I liked the book, but I'm also really stingy with my stars too. I, it's rare if I give a book five stars. I'm just gonna say that outright. I typically give books three to four stars depending on how well I liked it. If I really liked it, it'll be a four. If it's like my favorite book, I'm gonna give it a five. I think I had kind of a little bit too much of that like almost insta love thing for me. Way too much like going into the attraction they had for each other. It just kind of got a little over the top for me. I like a book that focuses less on love story and more on like bigger things. I think that's why I like the suspense genre. So wasn't like too into that, but you know, that is a lot of people's cup of tea. It's just not mine personally. Okay, let's move on to the second book. This is my favorite book of the month. It's probably gonna be one of my favorites of the year. I'm probably gonna do like a favorite books of the entire year video for you so you guys can see like my absolute favorites. I'm so excited about this book. It was so good, but I am gonna give kind of a warning with it too. This, this book does come with a warning label. I have more about that on my blog that I will link down below. Okay, 
This was a new to me writer and this was the first book that I have read from Jamie Jo Wright. I have been hearing about her all over the place online and I've started reading a lot of books from this publishing company called Bethany House and she is one of the writers and I'm so glad I picked up this book. I wanted kind of like a spooky book for October and boy did this fit the bill. I haven't read a scary kind of book in a long time because you know most of those books go into the horror genre and I don't read that type of stuff. It's just not my thing. I don't like that. But this was just the right amount of scary and mystery and suspense all wrapped up in one. Loved this book. This is called The Souls of Lost Lake and we are learning about the legend of Ava Coons and she is the only survivor of a family massacre that happened at her house and I don't want to you know give too many details about that you guys can read the back of the book about that because I know there might be some little ears listening but something really bad happened to her entire family she was the only survivor and she was kind of branded as the one who must have committed this horrible thing because she was the only survivor, even though she was only 13 at the time. And it was really obvious that, you know, this little girl couldn't have done that. And how this legend developed over time. So this is a split time novel. And the first story that you hear is Ava from her perspective and as she grows up. And she tries to figure out what has happened to her family. And then the other timeline you hear is Arwen, yes, like Lord of the Rings. And if you haven't read Lord of the Rings or you haven't watched the movie, it would do you a whole lot of good to brush up on that, at least the main characters, because there's a lot of Lord of the Ring references in here. So if you like Lord of the Rings, you're gonna like this book. Um, her perspective is modern day, and she is trying to figure out the mystery behind Ava Coons and what really happened to her. And, a little girl has gone missing in the same forest that Ava Coons was in. So there's like a split timeline thing going on here. I really, really loved this book. I devoured it. And at the same time, I was kind of like chilled to the bone a little bit too. So I thought Jamie Jo Wright did an outstanding job of making something scary, but not going into the horror genre. Now that is subjective. Okay. And I, I, I mentioned this on my blog too. Things, people find different things scary and different things too much. I have a higher threshold, I think, for this type of stuff just because of the line of work that my family is in. I, I come from a family of law enforcement and military law enforcement. So this type of stuff doesn't really bother me that much. Um, now horror genre, like real horror genre, that bothers me a lot. This type of stuff, like like crime type of things, that doesn't really bother me. So this is definitely from, and I've read more of uh, this author since this book. This is definitely her most, um, I'm not sure what you would call it, like scary book so far, I guess. Um, and I know a lot of people didn't like this book because of that. But personally, I found it fine. So really good mystery. I did not guess the killer. I did not. This was one of the only books where I did not guess who the killer was and had me totally till the end. Like I was so shocked. Like I was, I was finding myself up in the middle of the night trying to read this book. <laughs> my husband had to pry this thing out of my hands because I had to know. I think I devoured this in two days. Definitely my favorite book of the entire month. Okay, so that one, <laughs> I'm giving that one my rare five stars. The Souls of Lost Lake, five out of five stars. Link is down below if you wanna go check it out. Okay, so after I was done with that, I had to have more Jamie Jo Wright. So I read her very first novel, The House on Foster Hill. Now coming off of The Souls of Lost Lake, this seemed so much more tame, I guess. Um, this was more about like ghosts and hauntings and things like that. But Jamie Jo Wright has a way of writing those things where, you know, there's all these legends, but it has a logical explanation. So, 
you know, the whole town thinks that there's a ghost, but oh, it was really this thing in the end. So, you know, before you jump on me for reading spooky, scary books, you know, that it's, it's all like a logical explanation. She basically takes these legends, breathes life into them and shows what happened. So I love the way that she does that. The House on Foster Hill was her debut novel and it was about this old house split timeline again and this was about Kane Prescott and she had her husband die so she's a widow a couple of years ago and there's this big mystery surrounding her husband's death and then there's also a split timeline from the original people who lived in this house and what happened to them and basically they're trying to solve both of these mysteries at the same time so every other chapter you're hearing from you know either the current timeline or you're hearing from the early 1900s timeline very good book really liked it i think i gave this one like a three and a half out of five let me see no i gave this one a four this was a four out of five stars really like this one okay again i had to have more jamie joe wright the next one was another Kindle book and it was The Reckoning at Gossamer Pond. I hope I said that right. Another split time novel. This time we're centering around this pond and a church revival in the early 1900s. And this one was really interesting. I just finished it a couple days ago and I was not sure who was the killer in this book. Again, Jamie Jo Wright got me. <laughs> So I was really intrigued by this whole thing and what was actually happening. And at the end of it, it was like a rush. Like I, I was, you know, I was flipping pages so fast. I like books like that where they're so suspenseful and they're so interesting that I have to keep flipping the pages. I had no idea who the main character was gonna end up with in the end. And again, totally shocked by, by the ending of it. So Jamie Jo Wright is just a fantastic writer and I just bought her uh, very new book that just released The Lost Boys of Barlow Theater. I've heard great things about it. I'm probably going to start it today. I hope to start it today. So The Gossamer of Reckoning Pond I gave, I'm sorry, <laughs> The Reckoning at Gossamer Pond I gave a four out of five stars. So the next book, I was actually given this book by uh, Smidgen Press to review for all of you especially on instagram and this was the ellen montgomery christmas collection so ellen montgomery is the author of the anne of green gables series and you guys know i love anne of green gables there's all kinds of christmas stories and things in there so this book is a collection of different christmas tales and stories and poems and all kinds of things from all of her collections, not just Anna Green Gable, but like I think Emily of New Moon. And there's just like all kinds of different writings and so many of them that I've never read before, especially her poetry. And it's beautifully illustrated. And I have a review on my blog about that if you would like to go grab that. I feel like that would be perfect for you Charlotte Mason moms to add into your book basket for the Christmas season. It's releasing this month in November or no, it's actually October still right now, but I'm hoping to get this up like very early November, late October. So this one I gave five out of five stars because I'm just an Ellen Montgomery super fan. So if you also like Anne of Green Gables, you gotta go get this one. It is so cute. So my last book, this is totally different from anything that I've read in recent years. This is like super, super different. I read Red Blood Black Sand by Chuck Tatum. This is a true story written by Chuck Tatum who was a survivor of the, um, the Battle of Iwo Jima. So many of you know that my husband is a Marine and we were stationed on Okinawa for a long time. So we have a lot of books about Japan and uh, World War II and the battles that happened there. I've read a lot about Okinawa. I have never read anything about the Battle of Iwo Jima. So this was sitting on our bookshelf one night and I just had, you know, 10 minutes to kill. So I just, you know, started thumbing through it and I was like, oh, this is really good. So I just started reading it and I didn't stop till I hit the end. So this has been made into um, a series called The Pacific on HBO, I think it is. I think it's HBO. 
uh, by Tom Hanks, I want to say. I've never watched The Pacific. I think my husband has. Um, that's an adult series. Just, just an FYI. That's, I would not add that into your homeschool. <laughs> um, just everything that I know about it so far, I would, I would not add that in there. Um, this one has photographs of everyone. I was so intrigued by this book. And I think because I've been so immersed in Marine Corps culture for almost 20 years now, um, I think that's what really got me about this one. This goes all the way from his days right before he uh, went to boot camp to um, the end of the battle. And then, you know, he talks about what happened to him after, you know, like what the rest of his life was like. And, you know, we meet all of his friends and we see how many of them survived this battle. So as far as war books go, I want to say this one was actually pretty mild um, as far as language. Um, he drops no serious curse words without um, almost like blanking them out in a way. I appreciated that as a as a female reader. You know, I'm glad I didn't have to, to read that over and over. I think uh, language is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to books. If I see a lot of um, serious curse words, it's a DNF for me, which is do not finish. I just, I chuck it. I chucked one last night for that very reason, actually, because I just, it just really takes away from the reading. However, um, because this is more of a nonfiction book, of course, you know, he's being true to what these people said and things like that. So I excuse it a little bit more in books like this. And because I know the culture, plus this is not a Christian book. This is the only non-Christian book that I read this entire month. And um, really gr glad I read it. Chuck Tatum, I, I can't really say that he's a Christian. Um, it's really up in the air. Just, you know, he knows Psalm 23, you know, and he attended one church service, but it doesn't seem like he is um, a saved Christian. It seems like he just... Um, was praying a lot in the foxhole, <laughs> to put it to put it really bluntly. He's no longer with us. He died, I think, in 2017. But this is kind of his memoir here, and um, very interesting. Sheds so much light on that battle. Sheds so much light on the Japanese. Um, it's not a light read, I will say. I read it in about three or four days. This is not a light read. This is a pretty heavy read. Um, you don't even get to the battle until like halfway through the book because it's all about um, boot camp, training, and um, basically the lead up, the push up to the battle. So he's, you know, going through all of this training and he's doing all of these things and he's going from location to location. And, um, you know, he talks a lot about Pearl Harbor. There's all kinds of things. I think if you really like World War II, this would be a good one. This might be a good present for your husbands if he likes uh, World War II as well. So actually I bought that for my husband for Christmas last year. So that was one of the other reasons I wanted to read it. I thought that was really interesting. I thought he would like it. Um, I think he actually requested this book. So yeah, I got that one on Amazon. We don't see anything too, too inappropriate, especially when we're talking about Marines. <laughs> Um, although it does talk about, um, you know, like brothels and things like that. Um, so, you know, just warning label on this one for you. All right. That is my October reads. That's what I read all month. I felt like I got a good mix of everything. I definitely went on a Jamie Jo Wright binge. <laughs> I'm planning more for November. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to read. I got like one chapter in a new book yesterday and I ended up chucking it because of the language in it. I was appalled. It looked like this cute little book and it was not. It was just not. So that was gone. Um, but I am making a list for November. I feel like November is like half and half for me because I'm preparing for Christmas but at the same time it's still fall. But I'm one of those nerds that gets into the Christmas stuff like at the beginning of November. So I don't know if I want to go more into Christmas books or if I want to go more into still fall. I haven't decided yet, but that's totally beside the point. But 
I would love to know what you guys are reading. Let me know down in the comments and I will see you next time. I hope you have a great rest of your day and happy homeschooling.